In this video, I'm going to talk about the quality allocation model for matching doctors and patients in economics. And this is just a useful way of visualizing the situation. So we have a graph here which maps onto patients with their insurance. And there's some unrealistic things about the graph, but we can relax some of those assumptions once we understand the basics of how this works. So you imagine the patients are lined up according to the reimbursement rate for their health insurance. So this patient here has the very highest quality health insurance that reimburses doctors a whole lot for all kinds of things. And this patient here has the second best uh, insurance reimbursement rates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're lined up in that order where reimbursement rates sort of the, you might imagine this as the dollar reimbursement per hour of the doctor's time on average. And that's sort of mapped um, in a downward slope because we're imagining a whole bunch of different insurance companies. And then we have Medicare. This is for people over 65 in the United States have government health insurance through Medicare and it reimburses pretty well. So that's going to be um, this line here. Now Medicare has fixed rates for everybody, which is why this line is flat. All of these people are on Medicare and the doctors get the same reimbursement rate for all of these patients. And then I've added a few private insurance companies here that actually reimburse at lower rates than Medicare. And finally over here we have Medicaid, which is for low income people. In the US, Medicaid is run by the states, but it tends to reimburse pretty poorly and many states sort of reimburse doctors at rates that are sometimes even sort of the, below the cost of production and sometimes not, but in any case, it tends to be the lowest reimbursing type of insurance. And so that maps onto patients. Now, doctors are going to be lined up to, according to some dimension of demand. Now, now you might think of this as best quality doctor, second best quality doctor, etc. Or you could think of it as the doctor with the best bedside manner, second best bedside manner. This is basically like how in demand are doctors. And we know that there's some doctors that if you want an appointment with them, you have to call months in advance. They're really popular. They have good ratings. And so maybe this um, dimension of the way the doctors are lined up, maybe it does have to do with doctor quality, or maybe it's just with doctor popularity or some other dimension of how in demand are doctors. So I'm going to add a sort of vague criteria to line up our doctors. I'll call it popularity and maybe popularity is positively correlated with quality, but not identical to quality. And of course, the way the system works is that if these really popular doctors want to, they can say, you know what? I only accept the very highest reimbursing insurance companies. I'm not going to negotiate to be on lower uh, reimbursement rate insurance companies. I don't accept Medicare patients. I don't accept Medicaid patients. These doctors have the power to do that. Whereas doctors that are over here may need to accept anyone who comes in the door regardless of reimbursement rate. So the way doctors sort of sort themselves into matching up with patients on this map is through rejecting insurance that is below a certain threshold where these doctors just have more negotiation power with the insurance companies. Now, you might ask, how are patients allocated to doctors in the Medicare range? Because, of course, even though Medicare patients are only like 17% of the U.S. population, those people um, need a lot more health care than younger people. So the percentage of health care that goes to this group is actually pretty big. And in which case, you might ask, okay, wait a second. Which determines which of the people on Medicare get access to the higher demand doctors? And this is where we have to start talking about allocation mechanisms. The fact that financial allocation mechanisms and market-based allocation mechanisms are not the only way of allocating doctors to patients or allocating anything really. So what are the other mechanisms we could, we could think about? Here are a few other mechanisms. So you could 
allocate patients to doctors randomly, saying if you want to get into one of these doctors that has a long wait list, uh, you enter this lottery and uh, you get into that doctor's office if you win the lottery. You could have the doctors accept patients that they, they like, who follow directions. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily legal always, but it could happen where doctors might want to avoid rude patients, in which case the doctors might allocate to patients according to their preference for those patients. You could obviously first come first serve is the usual way that patients allocate to doctors and you're sort of hoping that you are first to come to these really high demand, high quality doctors. Um, now location based is actually one way of sort of engaging in this kind of discrimination where maybe you, you want to um, locate your office someplace that um, is in a population that you feel an affinity with or that you think um, <laughs> that you as a doctor want to engage with. And of course there can be discrimination in that, there can be access issues where some populations may have less access to doctors even if they have the high quality insurance. Because of these allocation mechanisms the doctors may choose to locate in certain neighborhoods where uh, where they prefer based on whatever preferences which might be fine or might be uh, potentially discriminatory. Now we notice over here that we have more patients than doctors. So the supply of doctors is low compared to the patients needing that. So how does the model handle that? Where in this case we have a bunch of Medicaid patients. The Medicaid patients sort of go all the way out here. Supply of doctors stops. Well you handle that through waiting periods. So these patients can see a doctor, it's just that there's a lot of them wanting to see a doctor and only a few doctors serving them, so these patients might have to get on a wait list. And that of course happens, and it happens more often in situations where the doctor supply is low, which could be for geographical reasons, it could be for systemic reasons, there's lots of reasons why there might be a mismatch here, but it means that patients whose insurance are uh, the lowest, in this case the lowest is Medicaid, but that could be patients without insurance whatsoever. And those patients are going to have to have longer wait periods because there's fewer doctors who accept patients with this low reimbursement rate. Now you can play around with this model all day. You can sort of do thought experiments where you say, okay, what if the government caps reimbursement for insurance at a certain rate and suddenly the diagram becomes this? How would that change allocation of patients to doctors? How would that change vertical and horizontal equity? And maybe there would be more of this stuff, more of this first come first serve stuff going on among patients at the top. Um, but would it change a whole lot? Well, it would change some things. So you can do a bunch of thought experiments like that through this allocation mechanism. And one more story I want to tell um, based on this. Of course, this is an allocation mechanism, and each doctor has a certain number of patients that they can see per, per time period, etc., etc., etc. There was one time when someone told me this probably fictional story about a hunter-gatherer society where the tribe in that society would um, have this ceremony every year where they they basically did a beauty contest for all of their females who were ready for marriage and then a beauty contest for all of their males who were ready for marriage and they matched up the most beautiful woman with the most beautiful man and said you're going to be married and then the second most beautiful woman with the second most beautiful man and said you're going to be married and I, I seriously doubt that happened I mean it, maybe it could have happened but that sort of situation I think is a very useful uh, story if you're trying to understand any sort of economic diagram because economic diagrams do exactly that. We, we line up people according to some criteria, in this case it's reimbursement rate, we draw a graph of that criteria along which they're lined up in order, and oftentimes we line some other group of people, and maybe that's sellers or maybe it's something else like doctors, along some criteria which might be popularity. And the market will match them up naturally in that way. So I think it is helpful to think about this ridiculous hunter-gatherer society story when you're trying to understand almost any economic diagram. This is just the way economists think. 
and it's a somewhat useful way of analyzing who gets what resources. And I think this diagram is really helpful in sort of provoking thought about different types of allocation mechanisms and how those might match up um, in, in just non-traditional, slightly more complex ways than a classic supply and demand curve.